Good evening. My name is Mark Barnes. Um, I'm about to present a set of pictures that I took around Stoke Newington in the end of the late 70s period when I was living at 135 Church Street in Stoke Newington. My parents moved into a flat in the house in 1960 and we moved out in December 1980 on the day that John Lennon died. I only know that because I we were mucking around moving house and listening to this stuff breaking on the news and it was quite startling. Um, this first image is a pretty standard shot along Church Street. I, I tended to take a lot of photos around uh, the house where I lived and along bits of Church Street that I knew and then moved further down Lordship Road and up towards Manor House where all my friends were. I didn't have any friends on the opposite side of Church Street or around the sort of southern side of Stoke Newington. Um, there was a bit of sort of territories and things like that and I tended to stick to the area north of Church Street around Lordship Road and Lordship Estate where my cousins lived. But this sort of Church Street is pretty standard. Uh, you've got the Edward Mann Milliners on the left there which I think is a restaurant now and you can see along to Barn Street and further bits and it always looked like this uh, for much of the time. I can remember the buildings that were there where the uh, fencing is, there was some shops there, but they all fell into disrepair and were slowly demolished. This is a view of my flat where we lived. We had the entire centre floor. Um, my, as I say, my parents moved there in 1960. I was an only child, so it was a big area to run around and play with all by myself or with the few friends that I had from St Mary's School where I went and elsewhere. Um, the house was in a fair state of repair and nothing was ever really terribly wrong. It was a nice place to live. The neighbours were all reasonably okay. Um, Mrs Wolfe lived in the top flat and she was, she'd been there forever. And say so we had the middle and there were two small flats downstairs. And we all used bits of the cellar for storing our stuff. But that changed over time as some of the other newer tenants were a little less undesirable and were prone to helping themselves to your stuff. Here's the view from the front door then. <laughs> um, it's obviously a lot nicer now. Um, I've obviously deliberately gone down a bit low to take this. Uh, mucking around with cameras when you're a teenage kid with cameras, you're trying to find the best angles for everything. And um, early obsession with cars is showing there that got into a lot of my photography. This view just did not change in all the years I lived there. There are a family called the Isles who lived in the house on the front there. and. That fencing with all the ivy on it all around it was Mr. Ryle's garden that he built himself with a pond with fish in it that people used to stop at all the time. And it was a feature and it was nice. They were nice people. Um, Edward, Edward Mann's milliners were on the left and that was always a source of noise and stuff going on. There were a couple of big fires that they had. One of them was arson. I ended up getting a reward for raising the alarm once. And uh, it was just, uh, it just never faded. We'd have bonfire night parties on the front there and people would stop by um, and it was always just, it was just a great place really. I don't suppose I appreciated it as much at the time as I should have, but it was a wonderful place to live. Here's a view of Bethune Road. Um, this is from about, I say 1978, I'm pretty sure it is. And here's the original darkroom print that I made in my friend's darkroom in Fairholt Road. Um, and Mike. Um, my grandparents had lived there um, from before World War II. Uh, my, grand, my father was born in Manor Road in, on the Allen Estate, and as was his sister, and I believe is their elder brother. But after my grandfather was killed during the war, my aunt and my grandmother moved into 6A Bethune Road and lived there until about 1976, by which time I had friends in, in, in Bethune Road. So it was a place that I knew and a place that I would regularly go to see them. They lived at number 38, which has got the big steps going up to the top of the flat. Um, we'd range all around there really, through there and then up to Manha Manor House. We always knew we could get a pint in the Happy Man, even though it was a pretty dingy pub, until we found we could stand more luck in the Rose and Crown and a few of the others if you didn't act like an idiot and didn't push your luck. Unfortunately, I, when I was even when I was about 25, I looked about nine. So I had a lot of trouble getting a drink, even when I was legally able to. But it was a great place to be. This is from when I uh, ventured into using colour transparency film, which for me was an expensive but worthwhile exercise. Uh, in the year this was taken, I was working for uh, the music paper, The Melody Maker, which is no longer with us. 
Uh, I started there in 1977 and stayed until 1986. So having Sham 69 on it was pretty pertinent for me. Um, I was sort of venturing around taking pictures around there quite a bit, but you know, there were, again, there were so many things that were so familiar, I wouldn't even bother photographing them. And I regret that now, um, which makes the few frames I have of odd shots and things quite interesting. But this particular view, I couldn't resist that. And I don't know who did it, it certainly wasn't me. But um, yeah, it's a relic of a lost era of the punk time. And we'd see the punk bands, some of them in the pubs in uh, Rochester Castle and places like that. And wasn't overly impressed to start with, but got into it as time went on. This is the Broadway car spares on the corner of Summer House Road and Church Street. My friend Steve had a flat opposite, and this is where these pictures were taken out of the window from. Um, just random, me being bored, take a picture of something because I just had to keep taking pictures. I was obsessive. Um, when I look back at a lot of it now, and I by no means have scanned all of it, it was some of it was just terrible. Even now I can look at it and think, God, what were you doing? But uh, these are quite interesting. And um, this shop was there forever. I don't remember it ever not being there. I appreciate it's fully gone now because as you can see, here's a view of it today. Um, which I find quite interesting. And exactly the same time, I then took this shot of looking up towards Wincops. And again, Wincops were, I mean, my, my family would never have used it. We never needed a timber merchant, but it was just such a familiar fixture on the street. A bit like uh, the old uh, junk shop that was on the, down the bottom there, just before the junction and other places that never seem to change. Um, although I know now it's gone, um, seems quite remarkable. Um, it was just familiar, even the color of it, the sort of greeny color with the black lettering and there was always something going on and vans in and out. And it was just an interesting place. But it, again, when you're a teenage boy or, you know, getting getting a bit bigger, you just never really look, do you? You just carry on going. And now I see, you know, it's got this uh, Whole Foods there and everything else, but times change and things move on. And um, they got just about got the color right for what it used to be, as far as I can see there. This image was taken in Church Street, and I'm fairly certain it was my 20th birthday, uh, which would have been in May 1979. Um, I was progressing with cameras and I'd moved on to from a little Yashica Lynx, which was a rangefinder camera to something with a, I could put lenses on them, it was a Fujika. And I was rushing around taking lots of colour pictures of nothing in particular, but Unfortunately, I lost a degree of all my pictures in the mid 80s, one of those fits it's a peak when you throw things away. And uh, I threw a lot of stuff out, but I kept this one. I'm quite glad really, because it's got Campion shop there on the left, which my friend Mike's family had owned and run for a long time. And even though they'd never really done an awful lot to it, it was a very familiar place that all the kids knew. And it was always called Campions, it didn't matter who owned it. I mean, I don't even remember Mr. Campion from the old days, but all right through the 60s and in through the 70s, it was never known as anything other than Campions. Um, and it's 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 quite makes me smile to see it. But of more interest to me by the time I was 20 was the Rosen Crown. I was in there a lot <laughs> um, and it was a good place. And the Barry and Joan Gassane, the people who ran it, they were really nice, very nice people. My dad was banned because my dad was a, he liked to drink my dad. So my dad was only ever in the red line. But um, who, again, the, um, the Brennans in there, they were fantastic. They were lovely people too. Um, we knew everybody like that because my dad was in all the pubs, but he was banned from the horse and groom and he was banned from the Rose and Crown. Um, yeah, enough said, poor old dad, he was a fella. <laughs> Slightly out of field, but this is uh, George Ewer, uh, the Grey Green Coach Depot, which I think became a Safeway, so it's probably a Morrison's or something now, I don't know. But um, this was where we would go on a lot of holidays and come here and get on the coach and go away when I was a kid. Um, and it was a fixture again. I'm, I'm always disappointed with this picture because I can only see one coach because there were normally loads. But I suppose the thing that makes it work is that you can see the full building. And I think this is just about the only building that I've photograph that in the, that's probably gone now, which a lot of people won't see or have known. Um, there was a big Fiat car dealers on the opposite side of the road, and I did photograph bits of that, but that's probably just pretty boring, and I wouldn't blame you for not being interested. But this was a very important place, and all my school games, trips to Brookhouse and Clapton, they, the coached firm that did all that was always grey-green at George Ewer. 
here's the bowling green. Um, this would be May 79 when I'd started going crazy with colour film. Um, I don't ever remember going in there. I don't know anybody who did bowls, but it was a feature and it was often in use and it was kept immaculate by the standards of the day. And it was a fixture. You know, it was again, it was a place where you, all the old people were, I suppose. It was the only way to describe it. Uh, you can see the White House pub in the background and the flats that were there. I think they're all gone now. Wouldn't be surprised because they were terrible, terrible places, really poor places. And I knew friends, I had friends in some of them, but there were right, even though I was well, older by the time I took this, there were rivalries with kids on the estate on that side and kids on the other side of the park. And you, you always had to be a little careful, but I'm not going to over egg it. It was one of those things where you had to take some care. And here are some of those really old men that I'm talking about playing bowls. Um, it's quite sad to think that all these people, may, maybe exception of the young guy, are probably gone now. Um, but this is the view from around the other side of the green looking across to Millington House. Um, I think I would have taken this because I'd got a 135 telephoto lens or a, something a little bit bigger and wanted to see what it did. And I guess this made sense as a shot to do. It's not very imaginative, but it's a catches a moment of what it was like, the atmosphere there. And it was obviously a nice summer's day or spring day when this was taken. Uh, back to Church Street again. Um, the white building used to be an electrical showroom. Um, vaguely remember that, but it was always very popular because it had this window uh, through the doorway. And there was a comedian called Harry Worth who did this funny thing where he'd raise an arm and a leg and the reflection would make him look like he was star jumping. And for some reason that was considered very funny and forever you'd be standing at your house or near your house and somebody would come by and mimic this Harry Worth thing in the glass edge of this doorway of the electrical showroom and then all of a sudden the guy who took it on turned up with this massive Oldsmobile Cutlass car. Um, American cars were exotic in the extreme, um, <coughs> excuse me, I say American cars were exotic in the extreme and he parked it there like that and it just seems mad that he'd park it on the street in Church Street like that but he'd also leave it on the front of the ground in front of 135 and my mum would always go out and shout at him religiously and I think she actually hit it with a bucket once she was that angry because she took it on herself to make these people go away but uh, in the end I think peace reigned um, and I really like this picture um, some of my friends all like it and think that I took it recently I can't believe that it's something like, well, August 1979, it's mad, but uh, time's flown by. Uh, more cars, I'm afraid. Um, this is Kazanoff Road. I know for a fact that my friend Mike and I went down there deliberately to take these pictures and mine are rubbish, but I've included it because it gives you a good view of the street. We'd for somehow managed to convince Hackney libraries that we wanted to put on a photo exhibition. And we thought the only thing we could do is cars in the area. And they agreed and they were going to do it at Stamford Hill Library and we were very proud and telling everybody and then they think they seem to have doubts and um, eventually they put it on at Woodbury Down Library where I think the three people who saw it were Mike's dad and my mum and dad and nobody else bothered but um, you know my parents actually walked the full length of Lordship Road to go and see that so I'll always be impressed by that but um, it was um, something that we did and we range around as I say here's because we're interested in this MG Magnet car for whatever reason it's a loss to time now but it's quite a nice view of the street and it's I suppose it's probably unusual because there's just so few cars um I don't know whether that's changed now because I've not been up there since I doubt this shot everybody tells me they like um it was purely random I took one frame and this kid was playing uh, street hockey in St Kilda's Road and I took this from my friend Scott's place at 38 Bethian Road out of the window and it was unusual one. And for some reason, I seem to have taken quite a decent picture. Um, I'm always not sure that a lot of my early stuff was really any good, but um, I'm very pleased with this. And my daughter liked it so much, she insisted I print it for her. And she's got that on the wall in her flat here in South End. And I'm quite pleased with that. I put this one in because I played football in Clissold Park every Sunday for years. I wasn't a good footballer, but unlike school where you had to be good, in the park with your mates, you didn't have to be. And you just played and played and played and played. And 
we never took any pictures of the teams that we played with or the groups and there were some lovely people who I remember fondly and some crazy moments of fun and games and mucking around and very serious football and quite crunching as well I broke ankles twice playing football on that field or the one next one over and I can remember just wandering around again with the telephoto board and thinking oh, I'll take some pictures and I took that um, and the more I look at it now the more I like it I think it just sums up the park I don't know who that kid is he was not familiar to me um, I can't even remember exactly when in that year 79 that I took it but it just sums up football in the park to me and we played forever we didn't train we were that daft you know but it was what we did and after a good game when we got older we'd all go over the Robinson Crusoe and have a couple of beers which is obvious this was taken a bit further over um yeah well it's just a silly picture really of these two blokes doing their daily work um what they were talking about what they were thinking about I do not know but um there you are um I've always liked it um for obvious reasons it's can't not like it in a way because it's just a bit of fun uh, it's not brilliantly executed but it's this old park and it's how I remember it and the other pictures I wish had come out better that I'd taken that I haven't included here because some of them really are just poor but um yeah it's uh Chris old park in in the microcosm really this picture is taken outside Laburnum house and now uh, this spot here was a regular dumping ground for cars if there wasn't a broken up wreck there it was unusual and it was almost like a rite of passage that that would be where they were left but that was mostly when the estate was still full of people um i just knew this because we'd be out there taking i think i've still got an aa badge off a car from there at somewhere in my shed um but it's it's somewhere where cars were always left and the kids were playing them and as you got older i got more interested in just taking pictures of them and at the top of Queen's Walk there, it wasn't the safest place to be hanging around some of the time. Again, I don't want to over-egg it, you know, it wasn't like something out of Death Wish or something like that, you know, it, it, but it wasn't a safe place. And so my friend Tim was with me when I took these and they, we'd um, been in the pub, I think, and then I said, oh, come on, we're going to set up and we'll do this. And I remember taking these pictures. And some people came out of Denman House to ask what we were doing. And they were quite interested that somebody would do that. And I took a few others and there's one that's even got me in it, which was set up carefully. They're not marvellous, but it sums up how the place looked to me. Um, it's not really a great more I can say about it. It, it was it was where I, it was so familiar, this place. It was a place I grew up. Um, I loved it and loathed it in equal measure at times, but it was still it was home. And um, I can't really say any fairer than that. And I've only been back once for a proper walk around and that was in 2005. And I guess I'll have to come back soon and revisit and have a look at a few things. Um, I'd like to see my great uncle's name on the war memorial by the town hall and do other things and maybe have a pint in the Rose and Crown and remember these days. So I hope that's not been too boring and I say thank you. Thank you very much.